Welcome to HMS Victory, the flagship of Britain's great admiral, Lord Nelson at his finest hour, the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805. Still in commission today in the Royal Navy, as the flagship of the Commander-in-Chief of Naval Home Command, she is therefore the oldest commissioned warship anywhere in the world. Launched in Chatham in 1765, she represents the ultimate development of the wooden sailing man of war. Measuring 227 feet from the stern to the end of her bowsprit, she has a beam of 52 feet. She mounts 104 guns and fully manned had a complement of 850 men. Victory has three masts. The foremast, the main mast which is the tallest at 205 feet, and the mizzen mast. Under full sail, she carried 16,000 square yards of canvas. This would give her a top speed of 8 knots, around 10 miles an hour. It's hard to comprehend the sheer power of a ship of this stature when she fired a 50-gun broadside. There's only one place you'd want to be, behind the guns. One hundred and eighty feet from the bows lies the cabin of Captain Hardy, the captain at the time of Trafalgar. He lived in considerable luxury. As captain of the ship, he was on call twenty-four hours a day, and so his quarters opened straight onto the deck. This part of the upper deck is known as the quarter deck. Situated here is the wheel by which the ship was steered. In calm weather, it took four men to steer the ship, and anything between six and eight men if the weather got rough. In front of the wheel is the binnacle, with the two magnetic compasses used to navigate. It was on the quarterdeck that Lord Nelson would place himself at the height of battle to direct operations. It was here that he was pacing the deck with Captain Hardy on the 21st of October 1805. The victory was engaging the French ship Redoutable on her starboard side at very close quarters. As Nelson turned to walk aft, a sharpshooter in the mizzen fighting top of the Redoutable spotted the Admiral and fired his musket at him. The ball entered his left shoulder, piercing both lungs and lodging at the base of his spine. He fell to the deck mortally wounded at the spot marked by this small brass plaque. He was carried below and placed against the ship's knee. Before he died, he had two requests. One was to know how the battle was going, to which they replied, My lord, you have won the day. The second was not to be buried at sea, but to be taken back to England. As they were six weeks away from England, this caused a problem. Surgeon Beatty found the answer. They placed his body in a leaguer, the largest barrel on the ship, and filled it with the ship's finest brandy. His body arrived back in England in perfect condition. 
Having seen how Nelson died, let us now see how he lived. The great cabin was his living quarters while he was on board HMS Victory, and he enjoyed even greater luxury than Captain Hardy. This was his day cabin. The cabin is still used today to entertain and dine overseas dignitaries and our own royal family. When the ship went to action, all the furniture in here was stripped out, folded down where possible, and stowed in the hold. When the cabin was completely emptied, three twelve-pounder cannon were brought in and placed in the stern. This is Nelson's sleeping compartment, with a replica of his cot. When an officer joined the ship, he would be measured by the carpenter, who would produce a four-sided wooden box with a hammock tacked on to firm the cot. This would be for two purposes, his bed, or in the event he died at sea, it would become his coffin. To take away the drabness of sleeping in one's own coffin, the officer's ladies would embroider drapery to cover the cot. These drapes were embroidered for Nelson by Lady Hamilton. There was, of course, no such luxury for the ordinary serving man. Their life was a very much harsher affair. This is the upper gun deck. In Nelson's day, it was known as the weather deck, as it was open to the elements, although it's covered today. It's the main working deck of the ship and the punishment deck. We are now on the middle gun deck. There are 28 24 pounder guns on this deck. Each gun had a crew of 12 men and a little boy known as a powder monkey. He was anything between 7 and 14 years old. Fire was a constant threat in those days during battle, so the powder charges were brought up to the guns as and when they were needed by the powder monkeys from the hanging magazines which were in the safest part of the ship, hanging between decks and the hold. As well as the magazines, the hold needed to keep enough food to sustain a crew of over 800 for many weeks. The place where the men ate their food was the same place where they lived and slept. 550 men shared their cramped quarters with 30 32 pounder cannon. Each had a crew of 14 men and a boy living in the space between the two cannons known as a mess. One of the boys jobs was to fetch the men's meals down from the galley. This one stove is where the food for 850 men was prepared. Men working in the galley weren't professional chefs, just plain seamen, so badly injured in battle that they couldn't work on the upper deck. When a man joined the ship, he was issued with a hammock and a mattress, which was a canvas bag filled with straw. Sailors called this a donkey's breakfast. The man was also issued with a piece of stick known as a spacer. 18 inches long, it was used to stretch out the head of the hammock. It's difficult for us, two centuries after Trafalgar, surrounded as we are by the comforts of modern technology, to comprehend the hardships, misery, discomfort and excitement of life on board a 19th century warship. <laughs>